In this tutorial, we'll see how we can create a sleek fade down animation with CSS. So if I uh, load the page here, you can see if you pay attention to the button and the logo here, there's actually a pretty cool animation. They actually come up from a little bit higher and also their size initially is a, is a little bit smaller. And uh, yeah, they fade in very nicely like that. So how do you do that in CSS? How do you do these animations? Well, let's take a look. So here we want to animate both the logo and the button. And in this case, we only want to animate this particular button, the contact button. Later onwards, we're also going to have that download button, right? That one should not get the, not get the same animation, right? So that's why we don't want to add it to the base class here, because then the download button will also get that particular animation. But the way it works is we have to specify the keyframes. So these are the steps of an animation. So I'm going to write keyframes here. So we can say add keyframes. And then the name, right? So these are the steps. Well, we can say fade down. So these are the steps, right? So we can say at 0% of the animation, they should be in a certain state. And then at the end, at 100%, they should be in a different state, right? So initially, if you remember, it should actually be opacity zero, right? We shouldn't see them initially. At the start of the animation, they are invisible. And they also come up a little bit higher, right? So initially in the beginning, they are setting a little bit higher. Right, so we can move the elements with transform, right? We can scale, right? We can rotate. We can also move them up or down or to the left or right, right? So in this case, up, so we use Y, translate Y, vertical. It's a negative number, meaning initially they should sit 30 pixels higher and also they should be a little bit smaller initially. So then at the end of the animation, they, they grow back into their, well, or normal size. Right, so at the end of the animation, the opacity should be one, right? So that means that um, it will go from this step to this step and we can specify how long it should take, right? That's, that's how these uh, animations work, right? So then at the end, there should, there should not be any uh, movement away from their position right now, right? So the, 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 the movement at the end should actually be zero pixels. And you can also just write zero, by the way. You don't have to write zero pixels. If you have zero, you can also leave that off, right? So don't think it should be 30 pixels to sort of compensate for the negative here, because 30 pixels should, would mean that they are actually going to sit 30 pixels below where they should be, right? They should just be at their normal position, which is zero movement. And of course their scale should, should simply be uh, the normal size, right? So this size. Okay, so these are the steps, right? So they are not applied to any element right now. These are just the steps. This is just the definition. So now we can go to uh, logo here, for example, and we can say animation. And here we have to specify which steps do we want to use for this animation. So we called this fade down. Uh, how long should the animation take? Well, it should take 0 0.5 seconds. So let's actually try this to see what we get. If I save here, and if we look at the logo now, when I refresh the page, it has the animation, right? Now in our, in the example though, there should be a small delay. So if you pay attention to the logo, you can see it doesn't animate immediately as we load the page, right? It's actually waiting a little bit. So we can also add a delay. So if you add a second uh, number here, the browser will know that this is for the delay. So let's make that 0.4 seconds. So if we save here and try again. Okay, so now when I load the page, when I re reload the page, well, it looks a little bit strange. So it's actually waiting here for 0 0.4 seconds and then it does the animation. What we want is that during the delay, it already takes up the first step. So it should already be opacity zero during the delay, right? So what we're going to do, right? So we can add something else here called backwards, which means it will already take up the first step of the animation during the delay. So if we save here, 
and now try again. You can see initially it's it's opacity zero now, right? And then it does the animation. Okay, that looks great. So we can copy this for the button as well, but we only want it for this contact button. Right, so now if we save here and reload the page, all right, we have a nice animation here. And of course, it's gonna look better once we have the other parts of the site as well, because uh, together, you know, they are all automated, they are all animated in a certain uh, sequence, so it looks pretty cool. But uh, you can see this, al this also looks pretty cool. By the way, if this was helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. Also, check out my courses on CSS and JavaScript if you wanna take those skills to an advanced level. Because in there, we will build some beautiful real world projects from scratch so you can see how everything fits together and really master CSS or JavaScript. And I will also release other courses soon like React and Node.js. So if you wanna be notified, then make sure you are subscribed to the email newsletter. You can find the link in the description. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon.